Coming up on Authentic Ag, our special guest is Rich Feltz, a Montgomery County farmer and president of the Kansas Farm Bureau. Also have reports from the Kansas Soybean Commission, Kansas Department of Agriculture, Kansas Livestock Association, and some markets with Paragon Ag Advisors. I'm Ken Rogers. This is Authentic Ag. Brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers, Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, kfb.org, and the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat, online at kswheat.com. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP that brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks real people just like you and me and we're waiting on you to join us so for fun adventure fuel up fuel your body and let's have some fun Well, in Ag News, new analysis shows U.S. farmers and ranchers are continuing to reduce per unit greenhouse gas emissions. Data from the Environmental Protection Agency and USDA shows that the agriculture sector accounts for less than 10% of total U.S. emissions. The EPA's U.S. Inventory of Greenhouse Gas Emission provides a first look at the 2018 U.S. emissions data incorporated into a new market intel report from the American Farm Bureau. This report finds that per unit methane emissions from livestock has declined since 1990 as livestock producers have increased productivity. Now, during the past 30 years, U.S. milk production has increased by 71 percent and per unit emissions of milk have declined by almost 25 percent. Beef production increased about 50 percent while per unit emissions have fallen nearly 8 percent. Meanwhile, American farmers are producing more crops on fewer acres. This analysis builds on data shared during the launch of Farmers for a Sustainable Future, which is a coalition of agriculture groups aimed at educating lawmakers and finding solutions to the challenges that are being posed by climate change. Well, a very important link to the American food supply chain is restaurants. They're looking at new temporary ways of doing business to just stay afloat. Traditional grocers are struggling to keep up with increased demand that are being brought on by the COVID-19. Restaurants are turning to grocery sales to make their ends meet. It's a trend that's catching all over the country as large chains as well as mom and pop establishments are looking for new income. Folks like Panera, well, they launched Panera Grocery not only sells their traditional Panera restaurant items, but also things like milk, eggs, and fresh produce in their 2,100 stores that normally you use to make meals. Sarah Burnett's the Vice President of Wellness and Food Policy at Panera. She says the decision to sell groceries is a reaction to the unprecedented crisis that the country is going through right now. Subway, as well, selling groceries at some of its stores, primarily in five states, California, Connecticut, Oregon, Tennessee, and Washington State. The National Restaurant Association says the industry has lost 3 million jobs and $25 billion in sales since the 1st of March. Spokesperson says 3% of restaurants have permanently closed. Another 11% will do so by the end of this month. And a study released recently estimates that the cattle industry losses as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic will reach $13.6 billion. This study commissioned by NCBA and conducted by a team of industry leader agricultural economists led by Daryl Peel, who is a professor of 
agribusiness and extension livestock marketing specialist at Oklahoma State University. He did that and they did that to assist USDA in determining how to best allocate CARES Act relief funds to cattle producers. The study shows that cow-calf producers will see the largest impact with COVID-19 related losses totaling an estimated $3.7 billion or $111.91 a head for each mature breeding animal in the U.S. Now, without offsetting the relief payments, those losses could increase to $135.24 a mature breeding animal, an additional impact totaling $4.45 billion in the coming years. Stalkers and backgrounders, uh, losses were estimated at $159.98 a head. That's a total economic impact of $2.5 billion this year. Feeding sector losses estimated at $3 billion or $205.96 a head. K-State's Glenn Tonzer, by the way, also participated in that analysis. More ag news online at agview.net. We'll be right back. I'm Bob Swartz, and I've devoted the last 43 years to helping Kansans reach their retirement goals and to protect the family farm. At Bob Swartz Financial, we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always dreamed of. Our team of professionals can help you create an efficient strategy using a variety of investment vehicles to help you address your financial needs and your concerns. Bob Swartz Financial values, commitment, and transparency. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Earlier in my life, I rode bucking horses and rodeos, and my shoulders took such a beating, and that was probably the reason for having several previous surgeries on both shoulders. About a year ago, I decided that I didn't want to have another surgery. And so I contacted Kansas Regenerative Medicine, took their treatment process. It was relatively pain-free. Now, after eight months, my shoulders have healed to the point where I think I'm probably 90 to 95 percent of normal. It takes a couple of months to start to see results and feel real progress. That continued to increase gradually until now at approximately eight months. And I'm extremely pleased. I've got full range of motion. I can lift weights, I can throw, I can do uh, a lot of things that uh, I couldn't do without a lot of pain previously. So I'm, I'm tickled to death with the results and I'd recommend this process to anyone. And joining us this week is Rich Feltz, who is a Montgomery County farmer and president of the Kansas Farm Bureau. Uh, good morning, Rich. Good morning, Ken. Good to be with you. Well, we appreciate you taking time uh, to uh, do this, but uh, uh, we say, uh, you know, uh, actually with what's going on the last few weeks, you and I both normally spend a lot of time on the road, but we're actually having to uh, do things a little bit different. But uh, this time of the year as well, though, you spend a lot of time on the farm uh, with the spring. And so we wanted to uh, uh, kind of talk with you and, and uh, kind of uh, get what you're hearing and some of the things that the Kansas Farm Bureau is doing to, to, to help your members and really Kansas farmers and ranchers try to navigate through really this unprecedented time we're, we're, we're working through. Well, you're exactly right. People right now, I think they're coming from the position of concern and then there's a tremendous amount of frustration out there. Uh, they're looking for answers anywhere and whether they're visiting with you or I or who else, they want an immediate answer to an unanswerable question. Uh, we, we know that this COVID-19 has really disrupted our society like probably none of us have ever experienced for sure. But what we can do then as an organization is try to assure people that a lot of things are being done behind the scene that they don't see. And with our organization specifically, our members are frustrated if they're on their level, there's not a whole lot that they can do on the big scheme of things. But working through an organization like ours and of many of our commodity groups, they can have an impact with those of the decision makers. So behind the scenes, that's one thing that's happening. One initiative though that we've taken on is helping with hunger. Uh, realizing this, this goes on 
our local food pantries are going to need a lot of assistance to try to address some food needs of those people that have become more distressed, uh, lost jobs, and those type of things. That, and then here again, just trying to keep the lines of communications open, open and the assurance that we are working for them. It is uh, uh, quite a, a task. I just want to talk again just a little bit. Uh, Kansas Farm Bureau, along with uh, uh, some of the local uh, uh, financial service agents, uh, the foundation, all working together. And this is something that's not going uh, just anywhere. I mean, this is going directly back to those counties and to those local community food banks. You're exactly right, Ken. And, and the initiative here is one, is something needs to happen. And for some time, we've tried to address how on the service side and our federation side, we could work to together to address some of these food issues. Uh, as bad as this situation is, perfect opportunity for us to work together to get our service keep people, our county and our state to work together on this endeavor. We're uh, talking with Rich Feltz, who is a Montgomery County farmer and president of the Kansas Farm Bureau. We'll take a break and there's more coming up in just a moment. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end user demands, the soybean checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. And our guest this week is Rich Feltz, the president of the Kansas Farm Bureau. And uh, Rich, as we look, uh, you know, what was going on on the state side, but also nationally, uh, the CARES Act is uh, still trying to get that figured out. We understand a lot of folks have uh, received a stimulus uh, uh, check, but with agriculture, at least as we're talking right now, trying to get some things figured out how to bring some relief and what exactly agriculture uh, and farmers and ranchers could qualify to help uh, get them some assistance. Yes, Ken, and, and one that we're hearing the most conversation about is, is the payroll protection program. And uh, as much money as there is in that program, we're hearing that by the end of the week, the request could already help outreach the amount of funds that are available. So a great, great, great program uh, for those that have employees. And we're also hearing that there are some opportunities for self-employed to, to participate and they just need to talk to their lender uh, to see how that, that might work out. Uh, Rich, the other thing you know, on top of all this, what we've seen in the protein markets, especially, in the, in the cattle market, where we've seen uh, almost the bottom drop out on cash cattle prices, but we continue to hear reports and see reports of uh, near record numbers of, uh, of the cutout, the box beef. Uh, USDA, many ag groups have uh, requested the secretary look into, it looks like they're now gonna look into uh, uh, the situation. Uh, Rich, we've been trying to look at this for over a year with the fire uh, down at Holcomb, you add this to it, and there's um, angst, anger, uh, fr frustration in the countryside when it comes to, uh, especially to the cattle trade. Well, you're you're exactly right, Ken, and I think I think to start off, with, it's a little frustrating to think that you know it's been it's been six months since we had that fire, and and uh, I was in a meeting, and a USDA official spoke, and and, and this was within a week after that, and. He said, we're going to aggressively look into that. Six months later, we're still looking. Now we're going to take this circumstance and tie that to that. I think we can all agree, though, <clears throat> that there's been a tremendous market disruption here, though. And I'm not trying to defend the action uh, of the packers and the pricing there by any means. But, but we look at the overall price uh, perspective and how there's been such a disruption in, in the marketing, the pricing, uh, the demand uh, that, you know, we, we see when we've, tremend we've lost for all practical purposes, a big market for our high-end high -end cuts. When we talk about the hotel and restaurant trade, uh, we've increased the demand at the, at the local grocery store for 
are more staple hamburger type products. So a tremendous amount of disruption all the way around in that industry, but not only there, but in all the other commodities as well. Rich, before we let you go, uh, you know, as we said, we're working through this. We're we're learning more, but uh, agriculture still has to go on. And so, uh, you probably see somewhere uh, light at the end of the tunnel, or uh, still a sense of optimism uh, to help feed a hungry world. Uh, you're exactly right, and I think one thing that I see is coming out of this is is uh, We've got people that have never experienced a disruption in their food supply. Granted, it's just been a distribution issue this time, but I think people in general, though, are more uh, accustomed to, or becoming more accustomed to the fact that, hey, my food is pretty critical to my livelihood, and maybe we need to pay more attention to that food supply from the farmer to the fork. All right, Rich, we sure appreciate the time uh, to visit with us, and uh, we'll talk with you down the road. And again, uh, uh, best of luck to uh, our great uh, farmers and ranchers. So thanks. Well, thank you very much, and wish everyone well as we work through this situation. Rich Feltz, president of the Kansas Farm Bureau, has been our special guest. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas Corn Farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. Imagine that you're walking down the aisles of your grocery store. There's edamame and tofu, tempeh and vegetable oil. These are soy foods and they're just a few of the many. The Kansas Soybean Commission celebrates National Soy Foods Month each April by encouraging consumers to explore soy foods and their health benefits. Soy foods can help weight management, improve bone health, and lower the risk of both heart disease and breast cancer. These benefits and more are outlined in the commission-sponsored Soy Foods Guide, which is available online at kansassoybeans.org soyfoods. You can also discover a variety of delicious, nutritious soy recipes on our website. Overall, soy is a versatile, protein-packed food ingredient with functional and nutritional properties that enhance finished foods in all consumer categories. It's often added to fortified products like pastas and cereals. Soy Foods Month is also a great time to remember that animal agriculture is the largest processor of soybeans specifically soybean meal. That's why the Soybean Checkoff funds research to improve both soy foods and soybean meal, supports programs in animal agriculture, and encourages consumers to choose a balanced diet. Happy Soy Foods Month. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. continues to face new challenges daily as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
thousands of Kansans who work in a wide variety of roles within agriculture are continuing their efforts to serve the needs of the state. Yes, agriculture is an essential function and we're still in business, but it's certainly not business as usual. Here at the Kansas Department of Agriculture, while the office doors are closed to the public, we are still working from home to support the agriculture stakeholders and licensees who are focused on their continuity of business. Kansas is fifth in the nation in value of ag production, so we know the state and the nation are relying upon Kansas farmers, ranchers, and agribusinesses for the food, fuel, and fiber they produce. The cattle must be fed, the grain must be milled, and the food must be processed and packaged and delivered to your grocery store. So that work continues, and everyone in Kansas agriculture is re-examining everything they do to increase online capabilities, limit human-to-human -human interaction, and enhance their already robust fire security efforts so they can produce what we all need while protecting their families, their employees, and their partners in the food supply chain. Throughout it all, KDA will still be here to help and support Kansas agriculture. We have a special page on our website dedicated to COVID-19 response with ag-related industry guidance, state and national ag resources, updated news about the state response, and contact information to reach staff in all of the KDA divisions and programs. Go to agriculture.ks.gov slash coronavirus, or just click on the link on our homepage. Our focus remains on the continuity of the food supply chain, public health and safety, and the protection of animal health and welfare. And our gratitude remains directed at all of you out there who are serving the needs of the state right now in so many ways. Be safe. Surecrop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business that started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families and rural Kansas for more than 100 years. And we're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. U.S. Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue recently announced that the agency would be expanding its investigation into the cattle markets. This announcement came after NCBA President Marty Smith sent a letter to President Donald Trump requesting the government act quickly to investigate the striking disparity between box beef prices and cattle prices in the futures and cash markets. He specifically asked President Trump to direct USDA to expand the ongoing investigation into market activity after the Holcomb fire last August to include the current market volatility taking place in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. Smith stated the request was made in the hope of identifying whether inappropriate influence occurred in the markets and to provide the industry with recommendations on how it can update cattle markets to ensure they are equipped to function within today's market realities. Additionally, Smith asked that the Commodity Futures Trading Commission study the influence of speculators on live and feeder cattle futures contracts to determine whether these contracts remain a useful risk management tool for cattle producers. KLA President Harry Mosier had previously sent a similar letter to USDA Undersecretary Greg Ibaugh requesting an investigation to determine if any violations of the Packers and Stockyards Act occurred following the first diagnosis of coronavirus in the U.S. January 21st. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Supply. 
At Farm Credit, we partner with America's farmers who work hard each and every day to grow the food that we all enjoy. It's not an easy task, but it's an important one. Farm Credit is proud to work with farmers and ranchers, lending support in rural America. Good morning. Zach Gotot here with Paragon Ag, a division of Keiko Isom. Another week of more corona has come and gone, and it's continuing to take no prisoners in the commodity markets. The dairy industry and livestock sector are taking the brunt of it, with schools and restaurants closed. The consumer demand is now pivoting to the grocery space. This change in buying happened almost with the flip of a switch, causing a supply chain bottleneck. I don't need to tell you this, but if you've been to a grocery store over the last 30 days, it's evident that the demand is there, as shelf stockers can't keep up. You would think with this type of buying that the cattle and hog markets would be racing to the upside, but in reality, we're seeing the opposite. It makes the guy scratch his head. What's going on is we are seeing packing plants either shutting down production completely or slowing down the chain speeds in order to maintain the proper social distance, both with the goal to slow the spread of COVID. So at the end of the day, we're not killing the same number of head that we normally see. The demand for the finished product is clearly there. We have this glut of live animals on the supply side, but we have this disconnect between the two as processing isn't keeping the pace it should. With everything going on, this goes to show, not only in the livestock, but in grains and other commodities, that the market doesn't care what your cost per acre or cost of gain is, it will act irrational long after you or I are solvent. Over the last five years, and especially the last 12 months, being proactive in your marketing has put you in a better spot, so you don't have to react when the market backs you into a corner. It's not too late to have that conversation. Even when everything looks the darkest, dawn may be around the corner. If you have questions, or would like an idea or two for 2020, give us a call here at Paragon Ag Advisors at 888-452-8751. I'm Zach Otop. Have a great day. Well, thank you for joining us for this week's Authentic Ag. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, you can email me, kenrogers at gmail.com. I'm Ken Rogers. We'll see you next time on Authentic Ag. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you.